Do your parents suck? Well, mine don't really, but the United States did. The War of 1812 was one of the greatest incidents ever of just let me be my own person. And pretty much after the War of 1812, Britain let America act as their own independent country and stop many of the practices that questioned the U.S.'s sovereignty. This led to a period in American history called the Era of Good Feelings, and it's what we're talking about today. Since the Era of Good Feelings is a very important period in American history, it has a tendency to go by many names. It is synonymous with the early Industrial Revolution, and it'll also go by the name the Antebellum Period, in a reference to the ante before bellum, belligerence before the war, in this case, the Civil War. Following the War of 1812 and the dissolution of the Federalist Party, it looked like the U.S. was going into a period of bipartisan and unilateral agreements on a variety of different subjects, except for one very, very important subject, slavery. With the invention of the cotton gin, slavery became much, much more profitable in the antebellum South. This led to a vast increase in the absolute number of slaves in those states. And this is what you think about when you think about slavery. You don't really think about 18th century slavery. You really think about this early 19th century slavery. It was the most brutal period towards slaves and had the most violations of their rights. On the other hand, slavery was in decline in the northern states. With new machines powered by steam supplementing the need for manual labor, slavery became unnecessary, and it was much more valuable to the capitalists of the day to hire farmhands to work in new factories in places like Lowell and Boston. Without the need for slavery in the northern states, many states took steps towards emancipation. Vermont outlawed it in their state constitution, and different states like Massachusetts and Pennsylvania had a more gradual approach, having newly born slaves serve their masters until a certain age, usually 25, and then become free. But all was not well for these newly liberated minorities. They still lack the ability to vote, serve on juries, run for office, and attend public schools, uh, rights which would not be granted until the 15th Amendment was passed. But you can't talk about the era of good feelings without talking about the economic and industrial innovations that went with it. During this period, joint stock companies were formed and began to be sold on various stock exchanges. Wealthy investors would invest in smaller companies to help grow them and make more money. And what we now think about as modern American capitalism was born. This period of vast economic growth was powered by a variety of industrial inventions, including but not limited to looms, steamships, and railroads. The loom, for instance, was smuggled over from England by someone memorizing it, hopping on the ship, and then copying it down here in the state of Massachusetts. But the most important innovations of this period were those relating to transportation and communication, such as the railroad and the telegraph. With the establishment of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, the Midwest opened up for new cities like Chicago and Cleveland to form along the Great Lakes. Uh, in addition to this, the Erie Canal connected the Great Lakes to New York, facilitating the creation of the Great Lakes Megalopolis, an area of the United States home to tens of millions of people today. All in all, the many innovations created during this period had a profound effect on the way we lived for centuries after.